everyone and welcome to another uh, spotlight session. I'm really uh, happy here to be with uh, Nuka Solomon from Free uh, Wheelchair Mission. Well, thank you so much, Nuka, for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Of course. So where are you based? We are based in Southern California in Orange County. Lovely. And tell me maybe, Nuka, a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm the CEO of Free Wheelchair Mission. I've been with the organization for five years. Um, I, most of my career has been in nonprofit organizations. Um, and I'm really thrilled to lead the team. We have about 33 employees, uh, most of which are based here in Southern California. And then we have um, some in other parts of the U.S. and a couple of team members that are outside of the U.S. Wow, amazing. So it seems like it's definitely been a huge amount of growth. Um, so I know you can, this is a little bit new for me as well, because um, you know, you've been um, in, you know, in touch with one of my colleagues. Uh, but why don't you tell me as well as all of the uh, viewers of the show a little bit about you know, the work that Free uh, Wheelchair Mission is doing, because I know that I'd love to hear about it and I'm sure uh, everyone else as well. Sure. Uh, Free Wheelchair Mission has been in existence for 21 years, since 2001. We are the leading distributor of free wheelchairs in the developing world. We give out free wheelchairs to the poor. Um, we give out a low-cost, durable, effective solution to individuals who potentially couldn't have access to it normally. And we have been in 94 countries since our founding. We're currently in about 33 countries, and we have about 50 or so distribution partners who help us to distribute the wheelchairs. The wheelchairs are manufactured in Asia, and then they go straight from Asia in container shipments of about 500 at a time to our distribution partners. And our distribution partners are largely clinics and hospitals and um, different NGOs that help us to uh, assemble the wheelchairs and then distribute them to people in need. Um, we're really, really proud to, uh, to be the leading um, provider of wheelchairs. Um, we're lifting people up. We're giving them that hope and that dignity that is renewed um, and otherwise would have been forgotten had they not had the wheelchair that they so desperately need. Wow, that's uh, an incredible uh, mission and what an amazing thing that you're doing on a on a day to day basis. Uh, I think you know, on a larger scale. Uh, but you could tell me maybe in terms of you know you're the CEO, obviously. Uh, what does your day to day look like? Is that varying between different projects? Is that more of the you know technical aspect? Um, you know, seeing you know where I guess the wheelchairs need to be delivered. Uh, maybe tell me a little bit about uh, how that usually looks. Um, well, I have um, the great privilege of being able to touch almost every area of our work from the manufacturing side in terms of us basically making a product. Um, and with all of the supply chain challenges around the world, there's always something logistically to contend with. So lots of decisions have to be made there day to day. I also get the great privilege to work with our supporters. So I work with our fundraising team and help them come up with strategies for reaching people and sharing with them the impact of what it means to be able to give somebody a wheelchair that otherwise couldn't be able to provide it. I work with our marketing team um, every day um, in being able to talk about content, um, whether it be on social media, print, all kinds of digital spaces, and then also just collecting the impact stories it's really, really important to us to be able to bring people to the countries that we serve um, as best as we can without them having to necessarily go to these faraway places. So getting stories, imagery, video is a critical part of our work, and I love that part of what we do. I also work with our programs team, which is the team that really goes on the ground to work with the distribution partners who distribute the chairs. Um, they have to basically collaborate with people of all different cultures, speaking lots of different languages and different skill sets um, in terms of how to assemble and be prescriptive in a distribution model. Um, and then lastly, I would say I love working with our operations team. I think of them as the engine of our organization. They help to make us go every day. So that means figuring out the budget and the day-to-day -day logistics of how to operate our office and manage our team. Amazing. And I would love to understand maybe for myself kind of numbers. So how many 
Um, you know, wheelchairs, are you distributing on an annual basis? Um, right now, our, we're shooting for, for this year, close to 50,000 wheelchairs. Wow. Um, so that's about 100 containers. Um, so um, our fiscal year typically runs from July to June. And each container, as I mentioned before, has 500 wheelchairs. So on, on any given month, we could do six containers to 10 containers. Um, we have had our challenges the last year, given, as I mentioned earlier, the supply chain. Um, since the pandemic, um, challenges that I think all businesses have suffered and dealt with. Um, but this year we're shooting for 50,000 and every year it's our goal to increase. Um, we've reached our millionth wheelchair milestone in 2017. Um, so we would love to be able to take less time to reach the next million. Wow, amazing. Uh, really amazing, Nika, actually. Um, and well, you've mentioned already so many things that you obviously have and so many different departments that are working to, of course, ensure that you are reaching your targets and creating your mission. Um, but in all of these years since, you know, uh, Free Wheelchair Mission was founded, uh, is there maybe something uh, or an achievement that you would say that you are most proud of to date? Oh, wow. Um, it's hard to choose. Obviously, reaching the millionth wheelchair milestone was huge. Um, I would say, you know, one of the biggest things for me is um, just going on the my, myself personally, going on some of the distribution trips um, with COVID. It's been a challenge to get out internationally. Um, we really had to listen to our distribution partners. Um, they've had the opportunity to have access to those that are in need in their countries. But we were more limited um, because of the pandemic. Um, we were respectful of the fact that they didn't want to put their uh, recipients at risk. But I would say a highlight for me was being able to give my very first wheelchair um, several years ago um, to a boy in Haiti where my family is originally from. I think those are the moments that really ground you and remind you that there are those that are really waiting and dependent on you to really work hard on their behalf. And unless you do it and experience it, you really don't truly understand the power of giving somebody a wheelchair. It provides them the access that they need um, to be able to have a brighter life. Yeah, I, uh, I really resonate with what you're saying. You get something that we do uh, here on Accessibility as well is really also here as a team and as a company because we are working with people with disabilities um, you know we bring different organizations as well so that our team can experience as you're saying you know firsthand um, what it's like and I think that really can make our mission you know as a company as well uh, so much brighter so I very much resonate with that message that you're giving over um, obviously, you know, you working with uh, people who use wheelchairs on a daily basis. And one of the questions that we always like to ask on this show um, is really what accessibility means to you. And we like to ask this because it's quite a broad question um, and everyone seems to have a different answer. And I'd love to hear yours. Um, accessibility equals for me opportunity. Um, you know, if you have access to anything that you would potentially be limited from having access to, you have an opportunity and an opportunity to expand your life. Um, it gives you hope. Um, and in our case, it's a wheelchair. You know, somebody who cannot walk um, without a mobility aid, cannot uh, move without a mobility aid device, um, has limited access, limited access to potentially go to school, go to worship in their church, their synagogue. Um, their community, um, be around um, loved ones outside of their household, um, really feel integrated in society. Um, and being able to give a person a wheelchair allows for them that just that glimmer of hope that they can then magnify. And the wheelchair itself gives them access. We've seen so many times individuals get the wheelchair and they thank us to just have the access to go outside to see the sunlight or to be able to go to school or to be able to give their families access to be able to go to work because their families are now not held down um, in caring for them and lifting them up day to day without that wheelchair. And I think that in the developing world and impoverished um, nations and, and communities, that is absolutely critical. 
um, because not having a wheelchair could hinder not just the individual, but be a multiplying effect for their family in a way that could really keep them down and limit their access to potentially growth um, economically, growth in terms of education, and just growth in terms of um, just communal living with others. Um, so a wheelchair to me, like I said, is opportunity, um, and opportunity equals access. I love that. And you've kind of, I guess, meant, you know, mentioned this in, in what you've just said now, but if you were giving a message to, uh, you know, a business owner to cater for your community, to cater for people who do need wheelchairs, you know, what would that uh, messaging exactly be? And it might be a similar answer to what you've said, or it might be something different, but I'm interested to hear. Yeah, I think that all business um, people, um, I think most business people do not consider those with disabilities in their business model. Um, it, it, it's a short-sighted view um, because they don't realize and they don't maybe instinctually think of them um, when they're thinking of whether it be opening a restaurant or um, even having an online platform and thinking about all the different types of individuals who may benefit or want to use their product or their services. So I think the best thing I think an individual who's running a business or starting a business could do would be to have an advisor, um, an expert um, who could give um, some advice um, in terms of what does accessibility mean? Um, so that could be very broad when it comes to people with disabilities, when you deal with those that may be hearing impaired or, or have vision impairment, or in our case, when we deal with mobility and there's many other things in the spectrum. Um, but I think that it's something that people don't instinctually think about. I think in some um, very um, advanced nations, the first thing that business people think about is in terms of their building codes and requirements and giving accessibility in terms of whatever the rules are and the permits that are required for having somebody walk into your business or roll into your business. Um, with a disability. Um, but beyond that, I don't think they think about, you know, how what they're putting in print should be considered, um, you know, uh, sensitive to those with disabilities or what their imagery looks like or even the logos. So I think that's the first thing I would say. And I would also just say kindness. I mean, there's something to be said about customer service. And sometimes it can be challenging when you have um, somebody with a disability um, coming into your workplace and you assume that they need all, all the help possible and that they don't have any kind of independence or um, capabilities um, in their own right. I think the best thing to do is always to ask with respect um, and showing kindness, not making an assumption that everybody needs um, their certain, a certain same level of help and assistance. Um, and really letting that person feel empowered and letting that person feel like they're just like you and I. Yeah, I think that's uh, an extremely uh, important message to take forward um, and to give to you know all of the, the viewers of the Spotlight Sessions. Um, you know, for, for people who are watching Nuka, if they do want to support and they want to get in touch uh, you know, to help your mission or, you know, in some specific way, what is the best way for them to, to reach out? And is there a specific aspect of help uh, that, you're, that you're looking for at the moment? Um, two things. Um, we always um, would love financial support and engagement. Um, so engagement means, um, first and foremost, check out our website. Um, it's freewheelchairmission.org. Um, and also check out our different um, social media um, in terms of Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook. And now we're even on TikTok and we have Twitter. Um, so <laughs> definitely, I would say check us out on social media. Um, those are areas where you can really see the work firsthand. There's videos, there's content um, every day that's renewed. And then in terms of the financial support, I mean, for us, as I said earlier, our wheelchairs are considered to be low cost, but um, what we call to be a cost efficient. Um, and so that is one wheelchair is less than $100 US dollars. So that's 96 US dollars. And with that donation, you know that someone is getting a wheelchair 
um, and getting the support that they need um, and really being able to have that access and that opportunity that I spoke of earlier. So, um, and then lastly, I would say just share. Um, I, I think a lot of people may not realize that we exist. Um, so as many people as possible that could tell others about this organization, I think the better. I think the multiplying effect really makes a difference um, in being able to grow a mission. Yeah, of course. And, you know, here at Accessibly, Nuka, we're so happy to have partnered with you and, you know, help in any way that we can as well as a company to support you in your, in your incredible mission. Uh, well, Nuka, it's been thank such a pleasure so to have you. Time. Yeah, thank you for joining and thank you for being on the show. And I myself am looking forward to continuing the conversation and learning more about, uh, about you and the mission and really just watching you develop. So really, thank you.